Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician the Civil War. It's been a while but we're ready to dive back into this campaign. It is March of 1863. I have recruited some new units for my armies and I'm ready to start trying to make the final push. See if we can't drive the Union morale down under that requisite 25 so we can win this thing. He's only got about 300,000 men in the field which is kind of surprising for this point in the war. But uh, We've got some major stuff probably brewing over here in the west where there are multiple armies. I'm going to send the western army out from Cairo. I've had them sitting there for quite a while, but I'm ready to start trying to fight with them in the field. We'll see what happens. Uh, we're trying to drive the enemy from Kentucky once and for all. Uh, and I'm in the process now of moving... If we can move up to Covington, right outside of Cincinnati, and invite these guys to attack me there, and we defeat them, they should probably fall back to Ohio, and that would finally give us Kentucky. We'll see. All right, we're going to be fighting here at Benton, Missouri. Uh, we've got the Trans-Mississippi Theater and the Western Army, both around 29,000 men. Uh, it looks like i got to get some more guns in the Trans-Mississippi Theater because the Western Army's got 86 guns, only 20. Uh, for the other army so we've definitely got to work on that uh, but we are facing an enemy that is not nearly that strong he's only got about 34,000 men 65 guns so we're in a good situation here with armies coming from two different directions to come at hoe down bridges now we do have a bit of a problem uh, for the western army under jubal early in that they don't really have a way across uh, this swamp without coming around. So I can't really come at these guys from two different ways. Uh, just not really a possibility. He's exactly where we expected him to be. He's dug in right around the objective. So this is my opportunity now to take my time with this. We're gonna send one army all the way around. Uh, it's day one, it is afternoon. So I don't expect we're gonna get into this fight today it's going to take a better part of into the next day to be able to complete this. But it'll be interesting to see what he does if he decides to start maneuvering, which it looks like he's going to, based on what I'm doing. So we'll go ahead and pull the cav back to the flanks over here. And we'll get ourselves into position to start fighting. Okay, so we are starting to get into action here. We're dealing with some skirmishers. I'm basically sitting right at the edge of the woods on the right side, sitting behind a fence here in the center, and we're just trying to kind of hold out. We've got him drawn out into the open, which is perfect because it frees me up to get across the river here. Uh, so we're gonna send B across there. I'm, I'm sending some cavalry to go grab the escape point behind me or behind him I don't know how much that will matter in the end but uh, we're in the process now of sending the other army and they're gonna cross right here and move up into this position and hopefully get in behind him while we hold with Jubal Early's Western Army here uh, light casualties on both sides thus far morales pretty even he's got a slightly higher morale than I do but very little is going to be happening here, at least for a little while. I'm going to start trying to get a little more specific about where I want some of these divisions to go. The Willamette Brigade is part of Bernard B's division. They're moving in right here. I'll wait till they get across, and then we're going to probably move them up to this crossing here. Okay, we've reached the end of the day, which is unfortunate because I wasn't close enough yet to be able to adequately deploy my second army in behind him. And then there's a good chance now that he's going to probably want to redeploy his forces to deal with the threat that I've got coming that way. But we'll get redeployed here a little bit and we'll see where we're at on day two. So it looks like he decided to redeploy over here in a big mashed up bunch. I think I really just threw him off as far as the AI goes with my maneuvers and he doesn't know what to do with it. So now we're going to have an opportunity to move and really get him in a jam here. In fact, I'm going to try to send 
some units over here to cut off his escape, if at all possible. This is an opportunity to destroy a big portion of the enemy forces in a hurry. Okay, we're going to start converging on his flank right here. We're going to start getting into combat here with the Monterey Cattle Rustlers. The Danish Brigade, we are closing in very quickly. Smith's Division, we're going to swing around here. We're going to bring Hood around as well. We've got a lot of artillery way back, though, that needs to get moved up and into position where they can actually help shell the Union lines. We've definitely got him bunched up big time. And uh, there's like Flemish Lions. It's a little choppy at the moment here. I don't know why. And Yuma Territorial Guards are going to go into action right here. Probably going to have to keep it out here for the time being. But we're going to see a lot of Union units break very quickly, I think, on this one. All right, we've had a KIA, it's uh, Harry Hayes, the commander of the Louisiana Tigers, has been killed at the head of his troops. Well, that's unfortunate. He's right here in the center of it, though. I mean, they're, they're dealing with it big time, where they're at. I'm going to try to send in some additional resources to help out with them. We're going to try to put as much fire on these brigades as I possibly can, as quickly as I can as we start surrounding them. And I'm moving these couple of divisions here to get up and around him. It's still a pretty even battle, so there's a lot of fighting left to do. Morale's about even. He's still got slightly better morale than me. But you can see how he's just really in a difficult situation. We've got a massive cavalry force over here, 2,300 men dismount them so they can fire from foot. They're going to start breaking, but they've got nowhere to go, really. It's going to be impossible to tell who's really being the most effective until we can review some of the numbers afterwards. I'm going to start coming at some of this artillery if I can get waffered around on the side here. Got these two divisions swinging around, but they're not there yet. I think once they start breaking, we're going to see massive Union casualties on this one. It's been pretty even so far, and it's starting to climb for him now. The thing is, because he's holding so well, the casualties are going to really climb. Because his units aren't breaking. Right, send B around over there. I got to charge these guns real quick before they can do too much damage to me. charge those skirmishers too. Yeah, Hayes is taking massive casualties right here. Wow, they're down to just 461 men, the Louisiana Tigers. Whew. They have taken some major casualties throughout the war, but especially in this battle. Almost 50% of the small number they had left. going to break before long. Got to charge these guns too before it becomes a real issue. All right, see now we're starting to see his casualties climb. They're at 18%, 6,000 men lost. His morale's down to 39.
There goes B. Actually, B broke before Hayes did. Alright, let's hit some of these units that are broken. Seven thousand Confederate casualties. This is gonna or Union casualties. This is gonna be a major victory. Alright, I'm gonna take guys like the Yancey Independents and send them to kind of leapfrog the units that have been on the front lines for a while. Can't believe Hayes is still there. Hampton's brigade, they have Whitworth, so we're gonna give them sharpshooter. Boy, some of these units are taking a lot of casualties. I'm going to send units like Whitfield to kind of leapfrog. I'm going to start charging into some of these ones on the front line. Try to break these guys once and for all. Mount up Robertson. We'll send him into charge. I think it's time for Hayes to fall back. Okay, let's see what happens here. This charge by all these units should be what ends the Union threat. Just complete disintegration of the Union Army here. All right, we got one that we captured. Second Brigade whipped out. Enemy is retreating. Major victory. Now it's just about mopping up and trying to maybe capture a couple more of these brigades. Okay, we captured two more brigades. I think for the most part, that's going to be about it. I do want to take some time to review and see who did the most damage. It ended up being three to one casualties by the time you figure in those captured units. His morale's 3.8. Uh, so I do want to look at uh, combat report so we can see who inflicted the casualties. Uh, it was actually pretty even between the two armies. Trans-Mississippi Theater, specifically, um, man, all the victories, Maori's division. Yeah, my boys. So I'd like to see. Well done. Uh, Hampton's Brigade and McGowan's Brigade, specifically, did a lot of the damage there. Nobody else really in that army. Oh, let's look at the Western Army for a minute. Uh, so it looks like we've got a lot. Um, Yuma Territorial Guards. And Tucson Rangers will get, they'll get our uh, Battle Stars this time, along with Maori's Division. All right, let's go ahead to uh, Louisiana Tigers, who are obviously just decimated. They're down to 400 men. Um, Early's Brigade is actually not one of our patron units, so I'm inclined to use them to bolster the numbers of Hayes' Brigade and get that back up to a decent strength. Obviously, we need a change in command here. Uh, Gibson doesn't look like the guy, though. He's just not not good. We've got to see who we've got available that is a decent commander. How about Henry Walker? Yeah, he's pretty decent. Let's go with him. So Walker will take command there. That whole division, though, is still down to just 400 or 4,300 men. I'm just looking to see if we've got anybody else. Burkett Fry is wounded, but we'll try to wait and see if we can get him back. I think what we'll do here is we'll we'll go ahead and just recruit a new brigade to bolster those numbers. And they'll take some time to get there, 14 days, but that'll that'll almost double the size of Hardy's division at that point. So I think I'm going to move Julius Caesar Napoleon's corps out from the confines of Washington, see if we can't hit the Department of Pennsylvania. It's only got 4,200 men. He's going to fight a rear guard action and try to get out of there. So now what I think I might do is move out and try to grab this Washington Depot, this Union Supply Depot right there. I'd love to drag him into a fight here if I can. It's uh, almost the end of March now. We're at 52% on British intervention. I'd really like to be able to get that. Let's look at the numbers now. 
as far as what's going on on each side. He's still at 41 national morale, still about 50,000 men ahead of me uh, in terms of men in the field. All right, so we have passed Revenue Act 2. That's going to help us financially some. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at policies and see if we have any available policies to us now. Um, obviously, there are certain things we can't do just because we don't have the prerequisites before it. Uh, so that limits us somewhat, and we don't have enough available policies to do things like Diplomacy 4, uh, which would be really nice to have. I really want to do something to try and get more European support, but in order to do that, uh, we have to be able to get Emancipation Proclamation, which we're not going to be able to do till closer to the end of 1863. That would give us plus 25 and almost certainly get Britain into the war. So in the meantime, then, uh, not a lot of great options out there. We could do Confederate States colored troops. That's going to give us three CSCT brigades, uh, which honestly, just three brigades doesn't feel like it's going to help me all that much. Okay, I went back in and invested more money in policies, which then allows me to get these new units. Um, new weapons and ship types and military reforms because um, it allows us to increase the subsidies. But honestly, I think Diplomacy 4 um, is going to improve our relations with the Europeans, going to allow us to invest more in that. So let's go ahead and choose that. We could also have done Industrialization 4, but honestly, Diplomacy is what I want the most right now. So let's do that. Okay, we've got a big battle this time. It's going to involve the same troops that fought the last one, Trans-Mississippi Theater and then the Western Army. Uh, we're going to get up against John Wool with a number of various forces that are going to equal my numbers on guns and have me outnumbered in terms of manpower. So uh, this is going to be a tough one. Okay, so his... Reinforcements in the 46th Army are arriving in an hour. That's two divisions. Um, I think he's probably got more than that, though. Um, so we don't have a lot of time at the moment, and uh, I have to attack. He's going to be bunched up in here, so that's going to make it really difficult because there's really just so little space for me to attack through and do it effectively. So um, Chatham's division's got 8,300 men. They're probably the most intact of the divisions and the most well-numbered of all of my divisions. I'm going to send some cav up this way. I'm still waiting on some of these divisions to get in position. See, Maori's division's only got 6,000 men. We really only can get about a division at a time through this space here. Okay, he is much further south than I expected him to be, uh, which means we're going to run into an issue here with the fact that I gave orders for my guys to line up right here, and they're actually already there, and they are entrenched. So let's get Hardy up here to start firing on their flank a little bit and cause them to think twice about what they're doing. Uh, and then we're going to reform B's men. Same with Chatham. I'm going to give some new orders, and hopefully they get those orders before they get too far. Okay, not going so well so far just because I've only got just this one division that engaged, and they're taking some pretty heavy casualties while I try to rush more troops up there. But it's just really hard to get them through because of things like the swamp that's over here. And I've got cavalry that already broke over here. I am trying to get troops up here to get on his flank, but he's got some guys up there that I can't see. I'm trying to get my artillery into position. It all really got thrown off by me not sending my cab first to scout the area so I could see where he was. So I think B's division is probably eventually going to be driven off. Which isn't good because I'm already outnumbered. got more men coming still I think I've got another army coming as well uh, but they're still a ways off six hours away okay we're getting in closer now I'm sending one of Chatham's brigades up here to bolster Shelby's right flank 
to send Armstrong from Mowry's division up here to bolster Robertson's left. And I've got Hardy's division coming up over here. So I'm pretty sure he's got some guys in this area, so we'll have to be careful of that. But so far, the casualty is not great. 1,900 for me, only 1,200 for him. This is definitely not going the way I'd like it to. There goes Shelby. So now that puts Cruz on the front line. We've got morale issues, which doesn't help the situation. Okay, let's see if we can get New York Copperheads to come up here and help out. Go ahead and send Hampton forward. We just got to get more firepower on the line. That's the thing. taking casualties. Robertson. Yeah, everybody's firing at him. He's lost a thousand men. Oh, boy. This is so bad. So bad. So we're going to have to send Wofford up here to try and bolster that center when the time comes. Thankfully, though, we're about to get some more firepower on the line. Which hopefully is going to start evening the casualties out a little bit here. Lost eight percent of my men, though. Come on, boys, get up there and fire. We've got Whitworth rifles, so nice long range there. I don't know why the rest of this brigade or the rest of this division is back there. So I guess they are firing from where they are. Alright, he's still 700 fewer casualties than me. Standard from there is going to be able to level up and become an elite unit at this rate. Because he's firing at long range. He's not really taking any casualties. There goes Robertson. Every brigade on this line is suffering massive casualties. They're pretty even now, though. We're still about 700 behind him, so it's going about the same both ways. Wow, did he, he just charged out into no man's land there? It's an interesting choice on his part. bath is what it is. And it's not going my way. Although casualties are evening out. He's only about 300 ahead of me now. There we go. He drove off one of his brigades now. Thankfully, the, the fact that I'm outnumbered is less of an issue because of the narrow ground over which we're fighting. Plenty of backup brigades here. So we just keep shooting it out. And now we've evened the casualties. These guns aren't firing. Oh, that's a Williams gun. That's a machine gun right there. Let's, uh, let's move that bad boy up here to the front line. See if we can't take advantage of it. We just started putting those into the field, the Williams guns. Once it gets on the line, we'll slow things down so we can hear it fire. Oh, who just arrived? Oh, that was one of my brigades that withdrew. All right, now we're causing more casualties than we're taking. Let's get this Williams gun fire in here.
All right, boys. Get those things going. Making the noise quite like the Gatlings do, but we'll take it. I'm gonna send right to hit these skirmishers. I have a feeling newer copperheads are probably causing a lot of casualties because they're not taking any casualties. Let's take a look. I'm just curious to see what their situation is. Oh, wrong one. What division are they in? Okay, they're in the uh, they're in Hardy's division. They've actually only inflicted 250 so far. I'm a little surprised it's not more than that. They're not quite as effective as I thought they would be. All right, Cruz, hang on, buddy. Now we're hearing that Williams guns firing. There I was. I'm gonna run out of ammo fast though. All right, what's it looking like now? Now we've inflicted 600 more than we've taken. So we're definitely winning uh, the firepower edge right now. Hopefully that means we see some of these units break. Now it's 700 more, so that's a big swing from where we started. Make sure nobody's taking major casualties. Doesn't appear they are. And we've got backups for these units. Can't possibly keep this up. Oh! Oh, his other... They're back there. Oh, no. Completely caught off guard by that. I do have one brigade over there, but that's a major problem because that opens up a whole new sector of the battlefield that I was not prepared to defend. And there go my reserves. Ah, uh, that is not cool. I right, will start sending help that way. I was really hoping they'd come in the same way and be backed up behind him there. And it's only 10 o'clock in the morning, which means we've got to hang on for several more hours before Early arrives in the next four hours with his his army. And even when he does, it's going to take a while to get him into position. All right, B, just do what you can here, buddy. No, oh, jeez, no. Oh, my gosh, I just screwed up so bad. I just sent the entire army that way, which means I'm gonna be pulling them all off the line. Now I can I can fix some of that by quickly issuing new fire orders. But uh, I hate when I do that. I guess it's okay that the rest of them are pulling back over there because that's where I'm going to need them anyway. I'm going to move Walker up ahead of Cruz because Cruz's morale is not fantastic anyway. All right, we're now inflicted 1,200 more casualties than the enemy. There goes B. He broke. guys. I'm not too worried about them because of the swamp. Advances battalions low on ammo. So we'll pull them back. Keep them from suffering any more casualties. Willamette Brigade withdrew. Keep 
shooting it out here. Get an advantage early on here. Henry Walker's first command, uh, or first battle in command of the Louisiana Tigers. Come on, boys. Gotta start driving these guys off from here. They're just taking so many casualties, but they're hanging on. Okay, let's hope we can have some early success here. There goes lead better. My cavalry have been getting driven back regularly in this battle. I feel like Walker's not going to hang on a long time at this rate, not far like he is up front. collapse on that side if I don't do something. Come on boys, break them. I don't think it's having the desired effect and probably because he's in fortifications. And he's got a lot of men there. Oh, I lost the Danish Brigade. They disintegrated. Wofford was wounded. That yeah, was an ill-advised attack on my part. But I was desperate to make something happen because I'm not in a good situation here. Ugh. All right. I hate to say it, but... I think we need to pull out of this one. All right, final numbers. We lost 8,000 men. We inflicted 10,000 casualties, but uh, uh, it might have been a winnable battle, but it would have been brutal in terms of the numbers, considering how, how many men he had. Uh, I'll live to fight another day. All right, we're going to wrap it up right here for this episode. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We will be back as we get into April of 1863 in the next episode. Thanks for watching.